Today's COVID update is brought to you by Fultech Systems, your technology center, where you'll come for the price, but stay for the service. Welcome back, welcome back to Open Your Eyes. We're moving now into our second segment. Like I mentioned, uh, this week is actually being celebrated as Nurses Week. And this year, they're celebrating under the team Nurses, a voice to lead, a vision for future health care. Excellent. Now we've got the folks in to tell us all about it. Lizette Bell is in with us. She's the Chief Nursing Officer in the Ministry of Health and Wellness. We also have Frank L uh, Lorenzo, who is a male nurse at the KHMH, along with George Authors, who is also a male nurse. So guys, good morning and welcome. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Hi, good morning, my lady. Good morning, Jan. And good morning, Belize. Thanks uh, for having us. I'm loving the in sync situation there, all Jerusalem. Week. Happy <laughs> Nurses Week to all of you. And before, Thank you so much. before John said, I want to say it. I <laughs> love the video. <laughs> love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. And definitely, the nurses are, uh, KHMH and the nurses are trending today. Very uh, much so. With that really, you know, energetic and, and exciting video that you guys posted so uh we wanted to get that out there very early <laughs> i wanted to because john was going to steal it and then you know oh guys <laughs> once again good so morning you can see that nurses also have talent in dancing yeah. as well right dance move. Caring for our patients. Got dance move. i think there has to be dance therapy uh integrated at khmh now <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, it is Nurses Week, and uh, we're looking forward to how the celebration is going uh, with nurses, and that's exactly where I'd like to start. And we're starting off with, uh, with the chief, uh, Lizette Bell. Miss Liz, what's going on? This is Nurses Week, and uh, how is it being celebrated? Okay, um, Jan, well, for Nurses Week this year, we have been um, planning activities for maybe over the last month or so in partnership with Card Huchner as well as... Uh, with our different regional hospitals and community hospitals. So for this week, we are focusing on having some continuing nursing education for nurses um, so that they would be able to get um, accredited um, credit hours um, in relation to their licensure. And so we are looking at topics that um, relates to the current issues in nursing. For example, for today, we are looking at leadership and the transitional role post COVID-19 this um, evening. Um, we also will be looking at this, the mental health and so psychosocial component mm -hmm. of, um, of post COVID as well. And the day on um, the 12th of May, we will be looking at the discussion with our team and we will be having um, three um, dynamic presenters in the name of Ms. The first one is Ms. Laura for tonight, Ms. Laura Longsworth, our uh, past speaker of the house. Then we have our past um, chief nurse as well, Mrs. Agustina Eligio. And um, for the final day, we have Dr. Carly Martinez, who is also a nurse who will be discussing the vision with us. In addition to that, we will also be having some recognition for nurses and um, also we have some um, relaxed time as well for the nurses. So we have some activities like the talent shows, we have karaoke, um, but we will also be giving back to our community. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. you will see us in the different um, villages and in the towns providing some health promotion. Okay, Lizette froze up there for a second, but Frank and George, this is the perfect time for you guys to chime in. And uh, tell us about your choice to become a nurse. Well, well my choice to, uh, to become a nurse is that um, I have an uncle who is a nurse, who was a nurse in the United States. Huh? He was a practical nurse uh, working in New York City. He's the one that influenced me to be a nurse. Uh, we went to nursing school in 1991. So myself and George were in the same class. Ah. So, so yeah. we're in the nursing career for 30 years, uh, but we have specialized, we work in the operating data as what we call CRNA, Certified Nurse Anesthetist. So we have specialized, myself and George, we've been working in the operating data, doing anesthesia for over 20 years. Wow. wow. That's our specialty. Yeah. 
And, and that's a critical point because I think people, let's, let's talk about the nursing career. Oftentimes people think uh, all nurses are general nurses, yeah. but there are some like you who, like when we know we have a general practitioner doctor, then you have a specialized doctor in one field. The same is the, is the case with the nursing profession. We have been moving. Um, nurses have been advancing. We started to uh, specialize in various areas, mm -hmm. psychiatry, you know, uh, oncology, public health, public health, education. Yeah, education administrators. So nurses have been moving along with the times. Yeah. Uh, Progresses. We have to. We have to change and and adapt. Yeah. And that's that's called progress. As Frankie told you, uh, we. We started out together as batchmates and we, we did two classes together. And we started <laughs> our nurses, we finished that and had some experience and then went and studied as a teacher together and graduated like, together. Yeah. I personally got involved in nursing due to my mom, yeah. who served over 30 years. She was at the category of practical nurse, which is uh, a little lower than the staff nurse. Mean that they don't allow you to do certain things. You're not, okay. quite, you're not registered to do it. However, she was very experienced and she influenced me a lot. So I I sat one day with Mr. Darrell Spencer, mm. who is the of the NAV, and we sit on the steps. Saw my mom walking up this evening about maybe about six o'clock toward the house, and we looked at each other. We were graduating from sixth form, and we said, "Hey, what about nursing?" Yeah. And we both applied and we got our answer. Well, that's where we are today. <laughs> and I, I mean, that's interesting Very because good. for both of you, let's be honest here. People always think nursing is a female profession. Yes. I can imagine, you know, those couple of years ago when you were in, uh, started nursing school, uh, yeah. that it was, it was even more uh, a female dominated field. Tell us about that. When we started, when we started, when we started um, nursing in 1991 at the old nursing school, the Bliss, Bliss School of Nursing, mm -hmm. the class had three males, and that was the majority of males in a wow. class. When we graduated, it was three of us. That was majority graduated, and that was honors for us that we graduated three of us males. Because normally it's only one male, or sometimes wow. none. Wow! Wow! So that's when we started, Frankie, Georgie, and Darren. Darrell yeah. Wow. <laughs> uh, yeah. Dar Spencer is the president of the nursing association. Yes. So we both started um, in the nursing career, basic nursing career, and we started anesthesia, specializing in anesthesia also, yeah. because they have noted that most male nurses specialize in anesthesia. Mm. Okay. Because before we started, they only, only, know, only knew about two male nurses. Okay. That was Mr. Keith Neal and Gilbert Chan. Gilbert Chan. Both were nurse anesthetist. Right now, Mr. Keith Neal is an uh, administrator at the Healthcare Partners. Okay. So most of us specialize. We, we rarely stay in the base, in the bedside nursing. Okay. Uh, when we started, the, 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 popula pop, the populace didn't know about male nurses. They used to refer to us as doctors. Right. Yeah. So it was kind of hard for them to accept. But now we have a lot of male nurses now yeah. from Filipino, we have Nicaraguans, we have um, Cuban. So it, they are more out there now. Uh -huh. at Yushna, at, when we started, it was only about two of us. Yeah. Now it's about 39 male nurses at Carl Yushna. That's great. That's good. But let, let me ask the other, the other pertinent question here. So you, you all have been in the field long enough to know there is a global shortage of nurses. Um, most people, when they think of going into medicine, they think of becoming a doctor and don't go into nursing. Mm -hmm. So that means there's a high demand from the most developed countries to even places like Belize for nurses, which means the job opportunities for a trained nurse. There are a lot of different areas that you can work. What has kept you in Belize all this time? And I'm not saying I want you to go, please. Thank you for staying. We appreciate it. But just help us understand that decision-making process. Yeah. Well, for me, um Personally, it's, it's the love of my country and to serve my people. That's what kept me here. Because I'm telling you, the, the financial thing, the attraction of the money is, is great. They, they promise you a uh, car, house, uh, health insurance for your whole family. Wow. You name it. 
they, they even give you a, a bonus for signing on your hospital. Yeah, so you, you get a lot of perks. Uh. For us, it's been just actually loving our country and want to serve our people here that has kept us here. Yeah. You know, so Frank, that, that uncle in, in New York hasn't told you why or are you still in for <laughs> me For me, it's a love of country and I don't believe in dream. dream. Yeah. In my class, there are 15 of us and I could say in the least, we only have like three of us or four of us that Stay. most of us migrated. Yeah. Wow. Or to England now because England has been recruiting nursing now. Yeah. So most people have gone to England or United States. Because of love, for me, it's love of country. I have been influenced to go live in the States, to go, it will be better, it will be better. And I say, you know what? And my family is here. Uh, the only reason that I'm here, my kids are still here. Yeah. My, she loved to go to the U.S., so and that's one influence she has on me also. But, you know, for right now, I'm set to, to serve my country. Because if I leave my country, who else will be here? Yeah. That's right. Because most of our... Here at Carl Hushan, we have a lot of imported nurses. Mm -hmm. That's the problem. Yeah. If you walk around Carl Hushan, you see Filipinos, Nicaraguans. Nigerians. And, uh, rarely, if you go to certain areas, you rarely see Belizean nurses. Wow. And that's a real problem we have in. Yeah. The brain drain, and it's due to the attraction of the, the money, you know? Yes. Yeah. They, they are paying better, the $2 to $1, and the... the the period is higher. Yeah. It also ties down to job satisfaction. Mm -hmm. If you're not happy in the environment you're working, you're not having the proper equipment you need, you're, you're getting long hours, you're not getting uh, appreciated or thanked for what you've done, mm -hmm. or sacrifices you've made. Um, it's just that sometimes it's discouraging. Yeah. Tell you the truth, it's it's very it's very stressful on us as yeah. as head the family and. And also as nurses in the community, because we, we see a lot of we see a lot of uh, injustice. We what do you when you see the, the interns coming in, those who are studying now now they don't have the nursing school of Belize, but they have the uh, programs at the University of Belize. So when they come in for their internships, what do you say to them about knowing that Belize cannot offer what a UK can offer or a US hospital can offer? What do you tell them about staying home and contributing to the profession here? What I, what I tell them is to be patriotic. All of this is patriotism. If you leave, I leave, what will be here for Belizean to work with? Yeah. There will be a, a, a language barrier. For one, because if these foreign nurses or foreign doctors come, it's, 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 it's hard for them to understand our language. Yeah. So who will be here for you, for us? I said, I will stay. I've done 30 years and there's nowhere I will go. I can't go now. We have done I'm, all, I'm almost 50. So you know what? It's not time to leave at this time. Yeah. I won't make any noise. I'll be 51 this June. <laughs> <laughs> But guys, also one of the things that, uh, that, I'm, that I'm here thinking is actually, like you mentioned, the career. Uh, but at the same time, why would you, wh why would you uh, recommend for more male nurses? While it's, uh, it seems to be a female-dominated domina uh, uh, career, talk to, talk to the, the, the young brothers out there to tell them, you know what, this is definitely the way to go. It, it has something to do with the, the culture, you know. Because the, 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 the bravado, the... The black male is something else. Um, culturally, even in my family, the, the guys think that you should become a BDF or a soldier. And so I have people who in my family who are, you know, edging you and telling you, why don't you switch over to BDF? You still can as a nurse. You can, you can go over, you know. But uh, I don't know. It, they, they think it should be for females. But honestly, if you check your history, the nurses, the first set of nurses were males. Um, especially during the wars, the civil wars, the, the First World War, there were men who were sent to the front line to take care of people. It's, it shifted during uh, um, Nightingale's time yeah. when they came on board and, and, and made it a science so people can uh, scientifically approach treatment of, of others. Yeah. 
It's not just you, you go there and want to help somebody. You have to have a system in doing it so that you don't cause more injury. And so Nightingale started that, and, and therefore schools of nurses started, and it, it became a science. Yeah. That's where it started. So she became a face of nursing, but males were in the forefront from the beginning. What? And then backed off because, again, it's not as lucrative as being a doctor and as being, you know, an engineer and stuff like that. So the money is the thing that the meals have gravitated to and they run to the various jobs that give you more money. What's the nurse. appeal for both of you? Oh, yeah. What do you love about being a nurse? Well, in my speciality, in our speciality, it's not much... It's much that whereby we deal with a lot of patients that comes injured, gunshot, uh, C-sections, surgery. The satisfaction I, I get is when I see a patient come multiple gunshots. We work hard to try to save that patient. And then you see that patient a couple of days later walking around. Yeah. Imagine a patient comes almost, almost dying. Yeah. And then you see that patient walking. And the next thing, when you see a, a, a pregnant patient in pain, and then when you give the anesthesia that we give for C-section, it's spinal anesthesia. Yeah. When you give that spinal and you see that pain just disappear, the satisfaction that patient said, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. The pain is gone. Yeah. Yeah. That's my gratification. I get that to relieve that pain from a patient. And that is basic anesthesia, put them to sleep, try to alleviate most pain or majority of the pain, and that's the satisfaction I get. Yeah. All right. Yeah. We're told that, that Lizette is back on the line. Lizette? Hi. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We're sorry. You froze up for a second there, but it gave us a time to, some time to tackle the, uh, the anomaly of, of male nurses in, in the profession. But Lizette, yeah. looking at the landscape here in Belize, do we have enough nurses to, to meet your um, population size? Okay, um, well, Marlene, based on our last um, data, it is showing that we do have a severe shortage of nurses. Um, we have between 100 to 200 um, shortage within the next um, two to three years. And this information was done in 2000, so it wasn't taken into consideration the the current um, transition in, in health that we have now with the pandemic. Yeah. So you can see now with the pandemic, it has even increased because the entire health system had to be organized and be structured to be able to meet the needs of the population as well as looking at areas for the COVID-19. Yeah. So we definitely have a shortage and that is why we are here today to appeal to um, the general population, for, to students coming out of high school and also from the um, associate degree level to enter into the nursing profession. We have available scholarships for you. Yeah. It is a very rewarding profession as um, Nurse um, Lorenzo and Arthur have um, presently discussed the um, how we would be able to assist others if you are that type of person that demonstrate caring and humanity this is the profession for you and so definitely we would like to encourage these young persons to enter the profession and to grow our um, cadre and this is the only way we can care for our own Belizean people because yeah. as is 25 percent of all our nurses that we have in this country are foreigners and so we definitely need to grow our Belizean cadre. We are the only ones who will remain here and take care of our patients. But at the same time, we also need to ensure that we um, try our best to give them the best working conditions and remunerations as well. Yeah. Chief Bell, I, you know, I, 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 hear, I hear you cry for more Belizeans to actually uh, become nurses because it is a rewarding profession. But at the same time, some students might look at it from a, from a very, uh, from a standpoint of danger. And I'm saying this because uh, on the onset of COVID-19, a lot of our healthcare profession, professionals actually got sick with the, with the, with the, with the disease. And um, they're saying now, you know what, I, I don't think that's the road for me to go. What are you guys doing to make sure that our healthcare professionals are being safe 
at this point? Um, you know, John, in the beginning of COVID-19, there was definitely a scare. We had little information, but now as the year and a half have passed, <clears throat> we have been able to get more information, more data as to how the disease evolved and made changes as we uh, made changes as it relates to our our protocols and infection prevention and control guidelines and ensuring that adequate uh, personal protectives are available at the health facilities and ensuring that um, the nurses are aware they are trained they have the competency in using them and knowing how to protect themselves we have invested a lot in capacity building for our nurses to ensure that we protect them so um, yes, the, in the beginning there was some challenges, but going forward now we have made significant changes um, based on evidence and data that is becoming available on a daily basis. Yeah. Now it's a tough time to be a nurse, and uh, as you clearly said, it the pandemic has changed um, just well in in good and bad. It it has shown our appreciation for healthcare workers. It really highlighted, I think, even for us. Um, the deficiencies that did exist and uh, how even despite all of that, that everyone kind of sprung into action. Um, for Nurse Frank and George, tell me what it's been like for you guys. While you have been specialized nurses, I guess, in, in, the, oper in the operating theater, I should say, <laughs> um, the, what has it been like working in this pandemic? We're specialized nurses in anesthesia. Yeah, yeah. What, what we do is we have we have to deal with COVID patient and there's a set operating data that we do our COVID cases and we have to be dressed up in our PPEs and all these regalias and it is that we are well protect, protected mm -hmm. when we know that there's a patient that has COVID or a suspected COVID we prepare for that patient and and then we are more exposed in a sense because we do oral we deal with the oral to deal with the, the, upper, the airway. upper airway yeah. uh, that's where the spread of covid is most uh, can, can 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 be can happen no mm -hmm. so we have to be more protected because we deal with the airway where the virus is mostly located yeah. so you know. yeah. and i must i must add myself and frank and the other teams have really gotten uh, infections, right. as you'd expect. We we are in the airway most of the time. If we're not doing our regional, which is a spinal for like operation like C sections, perineas, and stuff like that, we have to go in your mouth. Once we're putting you to sleep and put a tube in your mouth, we have to be in your airway where there's a saliva and yeah. possibly coughing and us and stuff like that. So we are extremely exposed in our type of work. And fortunately, no, none of us have become yeah. infected with COVID. And now we you're pro protected, right? You've been vaccinated. We are protected. Yeah. And we are fully vaccinated. Yeah. Thanks to the yeah. ministry. Wow. Fully vaccinated now. Yeah. So Frontliners have already gotten the second dose, right? Yes. yes. Uh, yes. Yeah, we, we have our second dose. Yes, we have. Yeah, we have. All right. All right, so guys. So, uh, you know, I, I'd like to say kudos to you. And uh, the celebration is on. Uh, Chief Bell, once again, tell us how will the rest of the week pan out for you? Okay, um, for the rest of the week, we will be um, at the different health facilities doing some of the community um, outreach, like I mentioned before. We will continue with our nursing education and we will also have some uh, recognition and we will also be having some um, R&R &R for our nurses in all our health facilities. So we are having some talent shows, some karaoke. They, we also have the annual um, casual or t-shirt day that um, nurses uh, would use their nurses association t-shirt for that particular day. Mm -hmm. So these are the activities that we will be having throughout the, the rest of the week from now until um, May 12, which is actually um, International Nurses Day. We will also be having church services today and also an official one on Sunday because if it wasn't for God, we wouldn't be able to get out of this um, COVID-19 um, challenge that we um, are facing today. So that would be the summary of the activities for this week. All right. All right.
Chief Bell. And uh, Frank is there going to be a part two of the dance? Yeah. Is, is this, you know, is this an invitation? I, I sign up John to do the dance. That's already decided. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Tell me that you guys are in that video. I can't, I can't see all the faces, yeah. but you participated. No, no, no. no. Why what? not? Those are for younger people. Oh, <laughs> no. So if they should you know, have you're going to make us play like some to, music right now like and to, ask you to dance. <laughs> <laughs> I like to listen. I, I like to watch. I like to list the activity for um, Nurse Sweet Care at that Okay. Yeah. For, for today, we have uh, the staff show. Then there's a virtual church service and a brunch and award today. Wow. And um, tomorrow, the 7th, is a giveaway. And on May 11th, we have Day of Pampering, Casual Day and Nurses Appreciation Day. Yeah. And on May 12th, which is the International Day of Nursing, no? Yeah. So we'll, there's activities on that day. All right. All right. Well, guys, thank you so very much. Um, she before going, uh -huh. before going, John, I'd like to just give you a party joke. Um, Myself and Frank and Spencer, when we first showed up at the nursing school for our parent program, huh. we, after a couple of while there, needed to go to the bathroom and we found out that they didn't assign a bathroom for males. <laughs> <laughs> the people in charge had to figure out which, which, uh, which, which bathroom they were going to assign for us. Wow. <laughs> that, was, that was really funny at the time. I would like to ask permission for me to extend a happy Mother's Day to all the mothers of Belize yeah. across this beautiful country, yeah. especially to my wife and my authors. I love you, babes. Oh, wow. Oh. Uh, he not uh, a loving person. He loving um, Frankie uh, or <laughs> Frankie. on camera, watch those faces. <laughs> what right? happened? My, my wife is not here. My wife is in the States. Okay. So. She's watching via she Zoom. She can watch it. Yeah. Happy Mother's Day. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, thank you guys well, so very thank much, Thank you man. all for joining us, and thank you to you and all the other nurses in this country who um, so we we do we do appreciate all the work that you put in, the long hours that you put in, um, and uh, keep up the great work and enjoy the celebration. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. much. And right. because we love that yeah. dance so much, we're going to close off this segment uh, with the performance, I should say. Yeah. Um, the raccoon? That's a raccoon. I noticed <laughs> <laughs> the raccoon had a cameo raccoon, as well. That's the one that fell from the ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> Is he, I hope he's not participating in the brunch. That's the key. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Have a great day. Okay. So thank you very much for having us, um, Marlene and Jan. And um, I'd like to take this opportunity to wish all our nurses a happy Nurses Week and um, to thank them for their continuous support, their commitment, the service to this country and to the people of this country, as well as um, I would like to encourage our population to continue to come out and get their COVID-19 vaccine. We continue to do the screening. Um, and all the other prevention um, services that will be available to the community this week. All so right. thank you very much, Marlene and John, for having us this morning. Okay. Happy right, Nurses thank you. Week to all our nurses. All right. all right. Thank you. All right. So here we go. Nurses do have fun as well. And this is how they do that. Check it out. a year in this COVID pandemic. And we took care of everyone, even at the risk of our own lives. KHMH, this is what we do. We take care of you. This is a cause for celebration. So, let's party. Hold on. This is not how we dance. This is how we dance. Oh, yeah, me. I ain't
update was brought to you by Foltex Systems, your technology center, where you'll come for the price, but stay for the service.